in. baby yeah yeah baby yeah good evening guys how you doing facebook how you doing youtube welcome to another broadcast i'm your host mr finn uh today i have a special guest i'm gonna bring on his name is teacher Raffaele. uh in english we write teacher Raphael. he's uh, an italian out here living in brazil teaching english just as i am and my aim is to kind of have a conversation with him, him and I sharing experiences, asking each other questions, and to give you guys kind of an inside look on what it's like to live abroad um, and, you know, teaching English abroad. Uh, so that's my objective. Uh, there's lots of challenges uh, and adventures and fun and you know, there's lots of culture clashes that I would like to get his insight in or his insight on it and then mine as well. And then together, you know, and engage and interact with you guys. So let's see who's in the chat before I bring on my guest. We have my brother, Matt. How you doing, Matt? Good to see you. Mr. Tony Bruno, the man himself. How you doing, Tony? Good to see you, buddy. I'm glad you're here. Peekaboo. Hello, Peekaboo. Welcome. Flavio. Hi, Flavia. Where's Mr. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. So without further ado, oh, here's Nutshots. How you doing, Marty? Good to see you, buddy. So let me bring on my guest. Without further ado, let me introduce Teacher Raffaele. Oh, How you wow. Doing? Hello, Lloyd. How's it going, man? It's, it's, it's great, buddy. Yeah, it's so, fast. Tell was us just about like, uh, what is there's nothing to tell about me i mean like you know i don't know who's in chat but uh people know well, just in introduce yourself to my audience you know because i think your audience may join us and they know you but my audience doesn't so it's good. Uh, basically i'm an italian who used to travel i travel here in brazil uh, looking for a better life uh leaving the past behind and well so far i've been enjoying being an english teacher and uh also business by myself i mean yeah. You know, saying that I never thought being a teacher before was just like a, let's say, like kind of a joke. I mean, like I know how to speak English. I did a course about English teaching and I saw that in Brazil there was such, such an opportunity. I say, oh, wow, so nice. And well, so far now I am what I am. Yeah, that, English you know, teacher, working myself. Yeah, that's interesting that you, you, got, you already start off with that topic because that's one of my questions on the list that I put there. Like, you're an Italian. Right. So you come out here to Brazil. What what provoked you? Like what made you choose to teach your second language rather than your native tongue, rather than Italian? Why? Why English? Well, first of all, uh, English, despite what people think, it's not a complex language to learn. Uh, it's kind of simple. And plus, uh, you know, Italian is a very nice language. Italian is an old language. Italian is beautiful, I have to say. But the uh, point is, like, you know, in Italy, with Italian, you can only go to Italy. With English, you can go anywhere. Oh, yeah. okay. Viva Italia, I see here. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the that great. Is that's, nice, the, man. that's the great Tony Bruno. If you ever get a chance, check out his videos. He does lives twice a week. Uh, really good guy. Dreams to go to Italy. One of my dreams. Uh, I love the culture. Uh, and mainly those who know me kind of know how, how passionate I am about eating. Like I love eating and I, one of my favorite types of food is Italian food, pizza, pasta, Parmesan. I love it. And I love, you see, my family's Portuguese, right? My, my mother immigrated to America from Portugal and I saw a lot of correlations between my mom's culture, like my grandparents from Portugal with the Italians, like the old women, you know, who are widows were dressed in black. Uh, the family congregates in the kitchen, not like the Americans in the living room, conjugate in the kitchen, uh, lots of food revolving around the table. Uh, and I notice these differences talking loudly, <laughs> passionate people, <laughs> right? So I, I saw these, right. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. Like Italians talk like, you know, 
point is like you believe that uh, it, it, you know in Italy you think it's kind of normal when you move outside Italy and you start visiting other countries and you start to act like as an Italian you you you, you understand like whoa we are so loud. <laughs> yeah. And you know what's funny, yeah. Rafael? That's that's kind of the direction I want to go tonight. I mean, we we have time. My aim is to be here with about an hour. If we go a little over, that's no problem. But this is the kind of thing that I want to bring to my audience is this, this culture shock. Because most people, and Americans in particular, Americans are different, in my opinion, than Brazilians and people in Europe. Whereas America is already a very rich country. So Americans don't often travel abroad as, as often or as frequent as other cultures. Like Brazilians, you know this, they travel abroad all the time. Europe is a, a collection of countries. And now with the European Union, it's easier to go from one country to the next. But America, it's not common. So I believe Americans kind of have this... Um, this presupposition, this, this belief, like, like, because a lot of what we understand by different cultures in different parts of the world comes via media. And it's totally different from when you actually go there and you go to that country and you think to yourself, this is not what I expected. You know? Well, uh, oh, sorry. I interrupted you. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. Well, uh, point is, we have to understand one thing. Uh, why I got, now we go back to your first question, like why uh, I English. wanted to come in Brazil. Well, uh, I didn't ask that. I was going to ask that. You kind of answered that before I asked that. But I asked, oh. coming to Brazil, why did you choose to teach English rather than your mother tongue, Italian? Yeah, I remember that. Sense. But yeah, it's the first question people ask me. Why don't you teach Italian? Again, I mean, with Italian, you only go to Italy, so it's a beautiful language. And, you know, makes sense, makes sense. Because, like, but I'm going to ask you something. Why a Brazilian teaches English and not Portuguese then? Or why uh, another person, like a Russian, I worked with um, a guy from Hungary, and he taught English, why not his language? You know, we have a lot of, you know, foreigners. So English is the language of the world. But by the way, that was not the reason to come in Brazil. I came to Brazil to look for a better life. Uh, the idea of the job era was different. The idea was work with security because that's what I used to work before. Right? So I said, okay, let's. let's what let's what what job. what kind of what kind of security as like a security guard, security officer, or yeah, like security, security guard, security or officer, security systems. Kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Security officers, kind of things. You know, I know that everybody knows that Brazil has its own problem. <laughs> that's more the media. So, I mean, that was my era. Something that I like to do. And I came here and I saw, well, uh, maybe it's time to stop working with these kind of things, find something more comfortable. I, I saw also that, unfortunately, uh, people are not well paid here for security. So I thought, well, uh, maybe let's find something else. So I was working on the street and I saw uh, an, English, an English school and I said, well, an English school here. I've never seen that in Italy. It's kind of weird. But when I walk a little bit more, I saw another English school. And then when I turn my face on the other side, another English school. What's English school? English school everywhere. And I say, what the heck? I mean, like, so many English school. I say, why? And then I start to understand how important English is for this country and also all over around the world. Because, like, you know, lots of people here, like, you know, and I thought, well, well, English, you can go anywhere like me. I mean, now I can go visit somewhere else. And I mean, like, so Brazil is not only what, you know, the TV and the, the media describe is not only a place with crime and you know, uh, you know, criminals anywhere and poverty. Okay, there is that, of course, like in other countries. But Brazil is full of opportunities, and it's a beautiful country. It's rich, full of. You can do anything here, by the way. That's why I say. Yeah. No, you can, and it makes sense. And it makes sense. And I ask that more for my audience because I I kind of understand that English, and and this is one of the things I'm sure you do the same when you talk. To the students and and this was something i talked to when i when i had more like younger students and the kids and teens they they don't see the need i live in brazil why do i need english they they don't they want they don't see the value in it uh and they're there and not not necessarily because i taught at both a normal school at like i taught sixth grade seventh grade eighth grade and i taught at a language school 
uh, both places, but particularly the normal school, I had a harder time teaching the kids just because they didn't think like they needed it. They just, they just, it, I found myself oftentimes being more like a, a babysitter sometimes. And the challenge in, in doing that, I would have to figure out ways to make the class more enjoyable, entertaining, and bringing it to life to show them the actual need of it. Uh, I don't know how many of my own students that I have now that are adults, they would confess, oh man, I wish I had studied when I was younger. Oh, I wish I had realized <laughs> the importance of it. Yeah, you're laughing because you know it's true. The same thing, right? Yeah, it's, a, it's the same thing. Like I hear this every day. The point is yeah. like when, 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 when day they decide to leave their country like I did and like you did, uh, you know, they regret the fact that they cannot communicate and they want to go. They want to go because they say, this, 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 I think this is something like for everybody. Like when is a person uh, who lives in whatever country it is, doesn't matter. You can live in France, you can live in Italy. Many people ask me, why you left Italy so beautiful? <laughs> Indeed it is. Italy is beautiful. It's amazing. Like all Europe. The point is like a human being wants adventure, wants to yeah. see something different. I mean, like I know Europe, I know how beautiful it is and I love it and I wish I could go back right now in this moment. But I came in Brazil. It could have been another country like, you know, China, maybe. The point is like humans being wants to travel and they like to the adventure. They like to do something different, you know, and Brazil is different from Europe. Doesn't mean that it's bad or worse. It's just different. Totally. And you love it when you're there. Yeah. And you know, what's funny. We both came here under different circumstances, different conditions, totally different. Uh, so when you came here, let me ask you. Did you come first on vacation and think, you know, I can make a life here? Or did you actually <laughs> come with the purpose of I'm going to make a life there? Do you understand my question? Uh, yeah, I understand. Uh, I came here was like a shot in the dark. So I didn't really know what I was exactly about to do here. If I'm going to do, if I were, were about to do what I really wanted to. I gotcha. said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a try. I don't know if it's going to work or not. If it's not going to work, I just like move somewhere else. I mean, like on that time, I wanted to say, okay, if this is a place, good. If it's not, let's pack and go somewhere else. I was about to go anywhere that would have brought me some um, adventure. Gotcha. That's the idea. Yeah, makes sense. When I came in Brazil, I saw that Brazil was, was through 2014, was reach of opportunities. I saw that foreigners, different from Europe, they're well seen here. They're well considered. Like, oh, you're a gringo. And you know, we are gringos for them. Who doesn't know? Oh, you're a gringo. Very nice. And then people see you are interested. And you have some kind of, wow, so he, people here really like, are interested. So why are you so interested about going out? Because I want to see Europe. I know many beautiful things. And you feel like, damn, how they don't know this? But because we were between gaps, lucky yeah. to see these things. We're born there. That's why. Yeah. And, you and know, you know what? Yeah, you know what's funny too? Like I came here under totally dis different circumstances. Um, I never, I never planned to move abroad, right? Uh, I'm a very patriotic American. You can see, like, I have all flags in my office here. And that uh, I know. I love, <laughs> I, I love you know. Yeah, we know each other. We know each other. I love my country. Um, it breaks my heart what's going on right now. Nowadays, it's what's going on there. Um, I love the history, everything about it. I came here under different circumstances and many people, especially my students. And I don't know how many of my audience knows this about me, but I came here to save a failed marriage. I was previously married before from a woman from here for a long time. And it just was bad. It just, my brother, <laughs> if he's still in the chat, he, he knows this a woman. She made me, I was like an accessory for her. Like, uh, she was very educated from here. And, um, she made my, when we, when I married her, I took her to America with me. I took her to America. I had, I had no, I had no reason to live here. I was very successful in America. Like you, I worked in security, but I was installation. Like I worked, I was an electrician. So I did, I, I, I made a very good living installing the loss prevention system at stores, you know, the cameras and the sensors by the doors and, um, the door, the card readers, you come to a door with a card bloop, and opens the door. I, I was the, the foreman of the company. <clears throat> so I ran the jobs. I made a very decent living. I had two cars, I had a truck, I had a 67 Mustang. I just didn't have my own home because in California, property is very expensive. Um, so 
that's the only thing I didn't have, but I had two vehicles. I made a pretty good living. I ate well, I lived well and stuff. And then when I married my ex, we, I told her we're going to come to America. That's where my life is, but she just left, made my life miserable. And, um, like what you said about adventure stuff, I've, I've moved around a lot in my life. I've, uh, I've lived all over America, not all over America, but I lived in California, a little bit in Arizona. I lived in Nevada. I don't know how many cities I lived in. I've been to like three different high schools, uh, two different uh, elementary schools. So I learned how to adapt. Does that make sense? Like I learned how I knew how to get by. So we made the decision. Let's go out to Brazil. I figured I can ad adjust and adapt. So we came here. And my aim was to save that relationship that wasn't worth saving. And I realized that when I came here, after coming here, after the first month, I was just like, what the hell did I do? And I spent <laughs> probably about an, yeah, I spent probably about another, another two years, just like, just dying slowly every day, just dying slowly until 2012. Cause I came here in 2009. It's going to be, it's going to be 12 years. I've been here in April. Can't believe all I that. came three years after you. Yeah. I just can't believe how, how no. fast. Four. You came 2014, right? 2014, yes, more. It's not yes, three, five years, more. yeah. Five, five years, years after you, yes. Five years after me. So anyway, so yeah, so I, I made the decision to, to get out of that relationship. It was the scariest decision I ever made because I had no guarantee. I had no family out here. I had no place to go, no place to live. Uh, I actually was homeless for a little while when I made that decision, but um, <clears> I didn't <throat> stop. I was very lucky that I had a job. At that time, I was working at two places, CCAA, I think where I first met you. And yeah, uh, school, uh, school over there. Ciudad, <laughs> yeah, school in Ciudad de Viva. And uh, that's what kept me going. And anyways, it's a real long story. And then it was only just two years after that that I met my current wife. And I said, and the funny thing is, like, I started, I started training to be a teacher as soon as I came out here. Because I think you realize, I think you understand this. Like, here in Brazil, and getting to this idea about differences in culture, in America, you don't need to be graduated necessarily if, if if you go to a trade mm. school that's great or you could just like what i do what i did work work under like a contractor just work with the contractor as a grunt and kind of work your way up and learn get the experience and then eventually after so many years i forget you can take the test and get your own license like i did i got a c10 license uh so i was a certified electrician and that's, so I was, I was, I did well. And I did that without formal education, but that's, that's the thing about America, America. It's the land. Like you say, it's the land of opportunity. If you're not lazy, if you, if you got a good head on your shoulders, like if you're, if you're teachable, if you, if you pick things up, if you're bright, not necessarily like book smart educated, but if you're bright, if you learn, you can, you can grow quickly and you can make good money. Whereas in Brazil, it's really hard to make a good living unless you're certificado, mm. right? Unless you have a, a diploma yeah. or certificate, right? And yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I witnessed that firsthand. One of the schools I was teaching at, the Cidade de Viva, at the time, uh, I, was, I was one of the teachers that had some of the best results, right? One of the best results. My brother here, my brother's a plumber, right? Here's my brother here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, not a grunt, an apprentice. <laughs> well, come on, man. I'm not being technical. I'm using layman's terms, right? <laughs> Say a grunt. A peon. <laughs> a peon. Yeah, you get what you give in America. Need to hustle. That's true. And that's what I love about my, my, my country and my culture. You get what you give. You put in the work and you, you, you are successful. Here, here, it's totally different. It's totally, totally different. So, Unless you have the diploma, unless you've been graduated, you're really not looked at as 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 anybody, kind of. Um, yeah. And going back to the school I taught at, I was one of the teachers. I'm not going to say I was the one, but I was one of the teachers I know that had that was having some of the best results. Like my students, where I was actually creating English speakers with kids, uh, young teens, and other teachers were very. They weren't having much success, but I think a lot is with the approach. You know, understand the Brazilians are very grammar and very, you know. I have a lot to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we may get a chance, and this this we could do other lives too, <laughs> right? But that yeah. was the thing, and and and. But the funny thing was, even though I was one of the teachers that had was producing some of the best results, 
there were other teachers that were making more than me. And when I figured, when I realized that I was, I started questioning like why they were certified. They were certified. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So what did I do? I went and I went to a private school here, Una Vida, U U uh, Uva. I think it's it Uva, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's Uva, but the Uva is like a, the the abbreviation for Una Vida. That's the name of the mm. university. And I went there. It was a three and a half year course. Every Saturdays, eight hour days, every Saturday. And I put in the time. I got my diploma, and so now. Now I'm legit and I don't even really work at any place anymore except for one school. I prefer doing my own thing now, <laughs> you know, but the funny thing is that's the biggest difference here. So why, why did I go into teaching when I was an electrician? Because I wasn't an engineer because I wasn't the business owner. And when you're the grunt or like my brother says, the apprentice, you're not going to make much. Yeah. yeah you're not going to make much. The one who makes it is like the owner, the engineer. So, uh, I got into teaching. Now I had zero experience in teaching. So why would I choose teaching? Well, first I like, I consider myself a pretty decent communicator. I'm a talker. That's one of the things that I work on until today when it comes to teaching, the teacher talking time, trying to reduce that, let my students talk more, <laughs> right? So I, I consider myself a good communicator. Uh, when I used to work as an electrician at the company I worked for, I was the one that I would always train the new like employees. So I had some experience, uh, quote unquote teaching. I'm the oldest of four. My brother's on the chat with us. I'm the oldest of four. So, you know, having brothers and, and after my parents split up, I was kind of thrusted in a leadership position. So I kind of had that experience. And to top it off, I'm an actor too. I, I used to be an actor in Hollywood when I was a child and I did theater That's what you in didn't school. Do. You didn't do didn't that, right? That. You didn't no, know I didn't that? do that. But I did for more, more didn't know I didn't do. <laughs> but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I did most of the things you did, I did as well. So, I mean, we are more, too much similar because I've a plumber, I've been a teacher. No, I wasn't a plumber. That's my brother. I didn't do plumbing. I was just. just oh, sorry. I did, uh, I did I electrical. Yeah, that was math. Oh, sorry. No, I want to mix up electricians with dumb plumbers. Uh, sorry, that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, you got you got the pipe layers and the shot and the what do you call the plumbers? Uh, Sparkies. That was the nickname you gave the electrician. Sparkies. Oh, wow. <laughs> But anyways, yeah, so so I was, uh, I, I am, I can't say I was, because I'm an actor too. And I think that was probably one of my best features when it came to teaching. Because I look at teaching when I, when I, when I'm going to give a class, it's like, I'm going to put on a show. I bring the energy, you know, bring the, bring the, the, the charm and, and the positive vibes because, and I think you can, you can relate to this. Teaching is wonderful. It's amazing. When you have a great class, it's like very symbiotic. You go there with positive energy and you're having a good time and the students are great and they're, they're, they're spitting off their energy and you feed off their energy. They feed off your energy and you finish that class. It's like, wow, an hour went by like that. <laughs> Woo. Right. Yeah. There are some students that, uh, there especially are some the students private like ones. That. Especially that really like what, why do you think I went mainly private? It's, I just, it's so much more fun. It's another and world. Then, it's another world. And then, yeah, but there's the only, the only downfall <clears throat> I would say we're going private one. There's no guarantee. I have no, that's what they say to the Americans don't know what that is. That's your 13th salary of the year. There's none of wait, that. Wait, 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 in America. Oh, okay. I thought in America didn't exist. Like, you know, it doesn't exist. That's what I'm thing. saying. My Amer Americans don't know. That's what they say to it's the 13th. salary. They don't know. It doesn't exist. Doesn't exist there. Uh, those of you, uh, those of you in my, my American audience in Brazil and an employer and how I can tell you this. Cause he's a, He's, he has his own course. They have to, they have to pay into, um, it's like when you pay the, the taxes, you separate some money, you have to pay into this fund because in December by law, the, the companies have to give their employees a 13th salary, right? There's 12 months of the year. So you get a, a salary for every month and then you get a 13th salary. Don't ask me why. That is also what? the 14th. What? Yeah. As far as I know. Oh, you're there talking about people who receive you're, talking about, you're talking about vacation. You're talking about vacation pay, right? No, no, no. I'm talking about the 14th salary, an extra salary. Uh, there are some uh, <laughs> public servants, I think, in color, and like yeah, you know, yeah. they receive the 14th salary. If there is somebody in the audience who is a public servant, can confirm. But they have the 14th salary. I will yeah. ask. I will ask. I have students who are public servants, and I will ask. But I heard this gets, yeah. this gets to my point on the big culture difference. You see, so so going back to like teaching private, it's wonderful. I'm my own boss. I make my own schedule. I I do the classes I want to do. I work with my. It's it's great. 
but there's no guarantee. So if a student misses, I don't make money. Uh, so I have to make certain clauses with my agreements, like, you know, cancel at the day of, I can't, you know, I got to charge cause I got to protect myself, you know, but so there's no guarantee. There's none of this 13th salary. There's none of this FGTS, FGTS guys, FGTS. It's like an insurance. It's kind of like unemployment in a way in America. Like if you get fired or if you lose your job, you get all this money that the company put into this kind of insurance. I'm not going to break it down, but so I don't have any of that going private. So those are the only, and so that's the one downfall. And the other one is I have to hustle like I would in America. I have to go after the students and you know, this got to go after the yeah. students, got to market myself, got to, and do that on top of preparing classes and stuff. So it's a lot of work. So, uh, that's why I went to school. That's why I got certified because I wanted to be legit and it's helped me in the long run, you know? So there's this huge difference. So, talking about these public servants in America, you work hard, you get paid. Well, you put in the effort, you get a raise Brazil guys. Those of you mm -hmm. my audience who aren't Brazilian, it's all about taking what's called a concurso. Yeah. Uh, what is a concurso? It's like a, it's a government guaranteed job. It's like a, how would you call it? It's like a competition, like a test. Like it's like a competition that you can do, and if you pass it, you will have like after two years. Am I right? Let's see if there's somebody else can correct me. You have kind of a. It's very hard for you to get fired. It's it's almost impossible. You would have to almost do something impossible. really. Yeah, you have to do something really bad to get fired. And I I personally do not agree with this system. I I I I don't know. Maybe it's the American in me, but I think the threat or the the I think the threat. I was gonna say the fear of, of losing your job, of not doing a good job, of losing your job is a good motivator for some people who don't have a good enough work ethic to do a good job. You know, whereas these people who have these concursos, these people who have these government jobs, they don't have to worry. That's why you go to the bank, it takes forever. That's why you go to these places, <laughs> it takes forever. Cause what do they care? They're getting their salary. It's like, I would say the, the, the most accurate comparison I can make to America is like a union job or someone with tenure, like at a university. Cause when you have tenure, it's like almost the same thing. It's almost impossible to lose your job. And the union too, the union, it's all about the time you got, okay, lunch break, stop vacation pay. You know, it's, it's almost like a conclusive, all these holidays, vacation. But then I want to add something. Uh, you talk about America, now let's talk about the Italian side, European side, Italy, Italy. In Italy, it's the same. You have these as concursos. here or in America, it's the same as here. No, the same as here. Same as that's here. why I'm telling you, Brazil culturally talking, it's it's kind of similar to Europe, it's not so different about these things. It's kind of the same. The only problem is like something that shocked me when I came here. Now, let's talk when I came here. Uh, there were like some cultural shocks, we can call it right. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Oh, I, I still have them after 12 years. I still. Yeah. I still have them. One of the things that really shocked me was the public service here. Uh, I mean, imagine a gringo. I didn't speak Portuguese at the time, and I needed to fill a lot of paperwork. Uh, I was like, you know, I didn't really know where to go, what to do, and I saw like people, like you know, I was. I still remember. I was in Casa da Cidadania, in Manga, in Manaira shopping. I still remember. It was one of the first days I was in uh, I was in Brazil, so I was in need of some documents, and I knew that I don't remember exactly when Casadania closed. On that time was like in the afternoon, it was like um, four o'clock in the afternoon. I think I'm not I'm not sure. It was like long, long, lots of time ago. Dude, so four o'clock in the I afternoon. It's, it, it's time to shut down. <laughs> don't shut down. Yeah, no, it was like that. I was already there. I was already there sitting, and incredibly like it was like time to close and i was there sitting and i had been waiting for an hour and 30 minutes something like that and i'd been waiting there before they closed and then the guy said look come tomorrow because we're closed and i said what the hell <laughs> i mean i've been waiting yeah. for an hour and 30 minutes and now you tell me to come tomorrow are you yeah. crazy yep. this yep. in italy will never happen really you go to a public place they will you will go fast you will do your thing uh, things they know exactly what to do uh, what something that I perceive, I didn't speak Portuguese at the time, but it was really confusing. Like people didn't know what to do, so they had to ask somebody else what they had, what they were supposed to do. It was kind of confusing, and and tried. Of course, maybe the language 
wasn't like helping because he didn't speak like Portuguese, but also there was nobody that spoke a decent English as well. So it was like, wow, what am I going to do now? And it was very complex. And this is the, one of the, the biggest things that really shocked me, like the public service, which be per public, I mean, like good. I don't say like perfect. Even in Italy, the public service is not perfect, but at least good. It was completely hard for me to get adapted to that. And still today, as a businessman here in Brazil, it's so hard to go to a place, talk to a person who had been working there for maybe 15 years. You ask something and they don't know. It happened to me when I went to bank to a bank. I don't want to say the name because it's bad, but it was a bank from the state. There are two, so you choose which one. Is and it the blue, the, the, blue, the, hey, the blue one or the yellow one? No, it's the yellow one. Okay. So, <laughs> I went there. I needed to send a Swift to my mom. It was a, 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 it's a bank transfer, international bank transfer, and kind of simple. I never had a problem in other countries. So I've been in other countries. And kind, of kind of simple. It's kind of simple. I mean, I never had a problem in any other country to send a Swift. So I went there and I said to, to, to the person in front of me, and not going to say if this was a man or a woman, the person in front of me, and I said, look, I need to send a Swift to this bank account in Italy. And she was like tapping on the PC, looking something. And then I discovered that she was looking the instructions because they have an instruction there oh, with the passage through the things. And she just, uh, and the person just sh stood up, went to the manager, it came back, typed it again, just stood up again, went to the manager, came back and I said, look, what's the problem? And because I'm not the person responsible for the Swift. And I said, who is that? It's that guy over there. And I said, sorry, just to ask you, for how long have you been working here? 16 years. And I say, well, Wow, yeah. that was kind of hard. That was a cultural shock. I mean, like not being able to solve the problems as a gringo. That was a yeah. big problem for me. Yeah. Uh, so check this out. Look at Marty here. Marty has a question. I don't know how helpful any of us could be with this question because I've been married most of my time here. But he wants to know, I want to know what dating is like for expats. I don't know what you mean by expats. Do you mean talking about experts? Foreigners problems. Well, Marty here for for you for you, um, Raphael, or if anybody in our audience wants to know, Marty has a channel, and he breaks down dating apps, especially Tinder, and he kind of teaches guys how to how to do well on it, not to be a simp, not to be taken advantage of. So Marty, he does he does a lot of good work on teaching people on how to how to succeed, basically. So I don't I can't answer that because I was probably single for two years out here and for the first eight months i was i was doing nothing but take care of myself after that i played around i went out a little bit but i just the dating scene wasn't for me and then so if, i couldn't help you there buddy uh how about you well, you I'm dated for a while right? very short while <laughs> very short while because you know we have to say that if there's something that in brazil is amazing it's the women not only because they're beautiful, but also because they are very, very, very nice women. Like they're they are like so warm. They're like that, happy. That answers, you know? Hey, that answers this question here because I, I couldn't disagree with what you're saying. Italian, Brazilian, American women, definitely Brazil, 100. <laughs> percent That is not even thinking twice. Brazil always like you know what it's amazing about the Brazilian woman is the behavior. Uh, I never felt that. Though, of course, European women are beautiful. Uh, if you're from Europe, please well, don't there are beautiful be beautiful women angry. everywhere. We can't, we can't be too, you know, they're everywhere. But, you know, the fact that in Europe we have, like, the infamous thing to be that Europeans are cold. In fact, from one side, it is, like, we're talking about relationships. Now, Brazilian women are so effective. Uh, they're so warm. They're so close. If you need help, they help you. If they need to pet you, they pet you. Uh, there, that, that's that's why Brazilian women are uh, amazing. Not only because they're beautiful, but also because of their behavior. And I know that the Brazilian woman, especially for family, she's she's, she's amazing. You know because yeah. you're married with a Brazilian woman. You have three kids, four. How many kids do you have? Two, two, two. two. Well, lots of kids. So this is yeah. something like well, you know you know what you know what's funny. I would love to have more, but my num my firstborn, he, the way he is, makes up for like three kids. He's so much work. He's, he's he's so much work. He's got so much attitude in him, man. You know. Okay, Marty answered that question for me. Thanks, Marty. Yeah. But 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 by the way, there is something that I want to point out. Uh, you said like not to get. You mean like? 
What do you mean? How I'm, how answer, I'm answering the question here. The Finn brothers never did the same women. Never. I would look at my brother's <laughs> girlfriends as like a sister or something. I wouldn't be, it was weird. Yeah. So we, I don't, we never dated each other's girlfriends. But, but by the way, am I not wrong? He said, he asked him, you know, how not to take a, to be taken advantage of, right? Who? And this... not, not having a woman to get advantage of you, what he said, I think. No, wait. Well, I might be wrong, because I thought he asked, you know, how you perceive that a woman is taking advantage of you here in Brazil. I, I, heard, I heard that. I don't think that's what Maybe he said. Maybe I'm wrong. He just, he just wanted crazy. to know what it's like for us, what it's like for, for us. Ah, I want like. to know how what dating is like. Well, uh, there is something, there's something when, when you are an outsider, when you're not foreign, a gringo, you have some kind of uh, advantage because, you know, they're, they're, we have also this kind of charm. Something that I never had in, in in Europe. I mean, like they say, oh, just a man on the street. You mean know, like but in Brazil? Like, oh, gringo. So tell me about Europe. So that this kind of advantage. Yeah, that's true, and you know, it's it's common. People people oftentimes when when they figure out I'm American, they think, why are you here? And it's like, well, it's, <laughs> it's nice here. Question. I mean, it's classic. But I, I think people don't realize how how good a place is because the media makes every place look ideal and. There's no perfect place. Like I often say, I often say the, the things that are great here are usually kind of the bad things in America and the bad things here are usually the great things in America, you know? So oh, like, I always say that. The same, the same, the same. It's like that, McDonald's. Yeah. I mean, so, it's so gourmet. Things, <laughs> yeah. So things, so, so like the lifestyle here is much more chill. Uh, I do work a lot. I've always worked a lot, but it's much more chill than it is in America. Uh, I still don't, I still, after 12 years, I'm still not used to all the holidays every month. Like every month there's one, two or three holidays, <laughs> yeah, you know? 45 days, right? It's like crazy. Like, yeah. So, so I'm still not used <laughs> to that 10. after 12 years. Um, uh, peekaboo, right? Peekaboo's expat is uh, former Patriots. I mean, I am not an expatriate. I may be living abroad, but I'm still American through, through to the core uh i still i'm a still a roman citizen i guess <laughs> you can say <laughs> right uh, oh, i have to tell you something you will never leave your country uh, uh, behind i'm i i really want never. to go back in italy never yeah i i i've been working on going back no i already answered that question i've been working on going back for a lot of a lot of my own students don't know this because i keep it quiet so if they see this now they're probably gonna know but i've been working on going back for a while uh, if coronavirus didn't happen i would have been back already you know um same because i had an i have an opportunity to go back uh i have two kids i'm not saying i will never come back to brazil you know like i've built a life here and what you said there's a lot of truth behind it i have been very successful out here i have been very very successful i've been very blessed i've got a i've got a good reputation here as an english teacher i'm pretty i can say quote unquote kind of well known in the city it's very like anywhere i go but you are man you are kind of you thanks are. Almost anywhere I go, I'm always running into somebody. Or I can't say I know, but someone knows me. Hey, teacher. Hey, and I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> there is a funny story about that one. So I'm gonna tell you then. We do this time. Okay. Yeah. There's. We have time. There's no time limit. I, I remember when I was dating my wife. My wife now, she got jealous. Like I remember when we were going to the beach because the here guys, the beach here, the beaches here are amazing they're beautiful the sun comes up 5 30 a.m 6 rises up out of the atlantic the sands golden trees are the coconut trees are blown in the wind it's just beautiful uh and we'd be walking at the beach at nighttime it's really common here like one of the things you just hang out at the beach at the sidewalk walking up and down the beach drink the coconut hang out and we would do that my wife and i when we were dating and like seriously five or six times a night someone would stop me It'd be a lady or someone. Hi, teacher. <laughs> hi. And I remember she used to get kind of, in, she would used to get kind of uh, jealous. I'm like, what's the problem? He ain't know so many people. I'm like, I'm a teacher. Like, what do you expect? Like, you know how many people have walked in and out of my classroom and stuff? And so you develop a reputation. So I plan on going back. I want to do that more for my kids and my family. I want to be with my brothers and my, I want my kids to have their cousins around. You know what I mean? I want to go camping. I want to give my children this kind of American culture that you don't get here, but I'm not opposed to coming back, you know, having a house out here, coming back here, you know, like I don't ever plan on retiring. I could teach until I, until I stop talking. I plan on teaching. <laughs> 
<laughs> Until you become like me, like you, all your hair is gonna start start falling. No, from your head. no, no, no. <laughs> My hair is white. My hair is white. I lose it. But there is a truth about that. Like that's why Brazilians have to understand that, you know, abroad is nice. But like I just mentioned, you like for me, it's Italy. You will never put your country on your back and just like say, okay, it's over. You will always go back home. That is something that I've always been saying to everybody. You will always go back home. Always. Doesn't matter. Sooner or later, they're around. Look, I want to answer uh, nut shots here. They're around. They're around. You go to the beach. Lots of young, innocent. You you would take advantage of plenty of them, and I wouldn't condone it. But they're around. This is very very simple question, man. Just came here in Brazil and walk, and be a good person, and you will have the a funny. Loss. The funny thing is, this happens, like this happens naturally because, like, I even think the guys here they don't take. They don't. They don't value their women as much. No, that, that's something I always said. And yeah. Anyways, well, let's say Mr. Superman, Mr. Finn is Superman, and T. Raphael is Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario had hair, and he could jump. <laughs> you can't jump. A huh? white man can't jump. <laughs> well, not like Super Mario. Let's see. Let's see what Peekaboo says. I think these guys are very, very right. There's culture differences. And that is the major thing. That's a fun advent adventure. You know, it's it's it is it is an adventure. And sometimes these culture uh, differences are peculiar. Like, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. Brazilians, and I want to be delicate because I do love Brazil and I do love Brazilians. But they're kind of, and I'm speaking more of the Northeast where where Huff and I live. They're kind of rude people. Like they cut you off. In when you're speaking or they cut you off in line or if you're talking to a cashier they cut you off um they stare you walking down the street they stare at you they ask you personal question like no barrier so they're rude drivers um i mean and i'm not trying to bash them they're great people but this is kind of a cork about the people here but when it comes to eating they're like super polite. They do not touch their, <laughs> right? He's a lot. He's laughing because he knows what I'm talking about. They do not touch their food with their hands. They will. Yeah. They will eat a sandwich and that. They will just. They'll pick up a sandwich with two <laughs> fingers, wrap it in a napkin, and then eat it. Right? They will Don't tell eat. me because I've seen things with pizza. That That's what I was about I to say. Still they upset eat, about it. <laughs> they eat pizza. They eat pizza with a fork and knife, ketchup and mustard and mayonnaise and. Yeah, they you're eat, committing a crime. I agree. They eat a drumstick, chicken legs, and chicken wings with a fork and knife. They eat spare ribs or baby back ribs with a fork and knife. <laughs> it's like pick that food up, man. Like my poor <laughs> wife, my poor Ooh. wife. I embarrass her all the time because you know me, Rafael, and I think most people, if pe people who know me in the audience, know like I am who I am. It doesn't matter where I am in the classroom with my friends. I, 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 I'm comfortable with who I am. I don't try to change who I am for anybody around me, but I don't purposefully try to embarrass somebody, but my poor wife, because I'm, <laughs> I'm an American and I act like an American here. And for example, we love to eat baby back ribs, right? Costellians. We love them. We go to a restaurant. Do I. She's she, it's delicious. She'll eat it with a fork and knife. And here I am ripping it, the bones, tearing the flesh off the bones. And I'll even eat the bones, chew on them, suck the marrow out. Cause it's so delicious. Eat pizza with my hands, eat hamburgers with my hands. And she's embarrassed. Poor thing. <laughs> she'll often tell me, she'll often tell me, I think I mentioned this in one of my other lives talking about having confidence. Uh, we'll go to a place. We'll go to a place. Uh, most recently, about a month ago, we we're at a beach place in Bessa, and we we're eating crabs. And I'm ripping the crabs and sucking the meat out, and this and that. My wife, That's my wife complex like, things. If I yeah, eat the look, crabs, so complex. Yeah, people want to look, look like the crabs here. I have a crab ashtray. This is what the crabs look like here. They're little like this. Uh, guys, little. if you're not in Brazil, this is something that in Europe is super expensive. It's for rich people only. And in Brazil, we have it for free. Actually, it's more expensive than it used to be. It's like three, five AIs. Hey, it used to be like one. Uh, that's know, you're doing everything hey, wrong. You just have to go to the beach and pick it up by yourself. <laughs> Super oh, yeah, easy. But, but then you got to do the work and cook it. <laughs> Anyways, though, we were at this beach. We were at this bar restaurant at the beach, and I'm eating the crab. I'm digging it to <laughs> sucking it, eating the meat out. Da, da, da. And my wife is like, 
Oh my gosh, my love. People are staring at us. I said, so what? Let them stare. <laughs> like too bad. I don't pay my bill with their opinion. You know, I don't care, but that's another thing too. That's a big difference. Cultural difference. I don't know. Maybe not so much in America. They do this a lot too, but a lot of gossiping, a lot of looking at other people's lives and gossiping. That's a big thing here. Buying something to show off rather than just for yourself. That's another uh, big thing here. This is something that we do in Italy as well. Yeah. Gossiping. Not, I think that's almost everywhere. I kind of wanted to yeah. retract that, but you buy nice things here, not necessarily for yourself, but you want to show off. That's a big thing here. That's a big thing here. And this is something that I do not understand. Uh, maybe I think it's, it's cultural, of course. I mean, like, there's nothing, but in Italy, for example, it, it, it used to be in Italy the same before 28. After 28, everything has changed because in 28, we have like uh, 2008, we had like a huge crisis. So people started to become really, really humble. And we started not to care if we had a beautiful car or an expensive car or beautiful clothes or not. That was after the crisis. Before the crisis, like Italy was like that. But after the crisis, man, it was terrible. Hey, do you want to answer that question? Because that's an easy answer for me. I tell the US, it's men's. Escaping accepted. Wait a second. Do you understand, do you understand that? It's manscaping what I think it is. It is. It comes from it comes from landscaping and man. Do you know what landscaping is, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, that is landscaping. Okay, so manscaping, you're doing that with yourself. Yeah. Uh, I have uh, no it, idea. It, it's not it's not accept, it's not accepted, Marty. It's a must. Yeah. Brazilians, most Brazilians, at least the ones that I've run into, they don't like hair. Yeah, it's exactly what I was about to ask. Now, they, they don't like hair. This is one of the things that I love about Brazil. Like every, everybody waxes or everybody shaves. I used to do or, this back in Italy, oh, oh, by the way. I, I, okay, I wouldn't say, okay, okay. Um, the women wax, men either shave or trim. Because I don't shave my chest, I don't shave. I trim. Okay. I you shave my chest with the razor. I, yeah, I shave my no, chest with the razor. I don't. I, don't. I, <laughs> I trim. Actually, remember, in Italy, this is something that Italians are similar to Brazilians. In Italy, people uh, shave and wax. Men. Even, even Italy, the men? Even the men. And it was one of them. I used to wax on my leg, on my body. My are friend, you Joanna. Me? Which we, no, I'm not kidding. This is the same. Wow. In Italy, it's the same in Brazil. People, wow. you know, in Italy, it's super hard to find a man with hair with hair on the body. Wow! So it's a must here in Brazil. If you have like if you have a girl uh, and you come in Brazil and you have hair in your body, the girl is said, shave and then come back. <laughs> yeah, I'm not no, joking. Sha not yeah, joking. shaving. I shave my face. I shave my face, but like my arms, maybe because I have tattoos on my arms too. I I do shave where my tattoos are, but the rest of it, I trim it. So it's not like a big bush of hair and then empty for the tattoos. Uh, so I trim it. Oh, yeah, in my yeah, chest. Yeah, use a machine. Nah, I do. I use a machine, but I don't go zero. I go like a number two. You nah, know, I, I go trim zero. It. I hate hair. Uh, I, I hate hair. I hate beard. I hate. I just don't hate my hair, and it's the only thing that is falling down <laughs> from my body. You know, it's funny. I kind of <laughs> miss. I kind of miss my long beard. I had a long beard, but uh, I got rid of it. And I, I mean, I don't regret getting. I mean, I miss it, but I don't regret getting rid of it at the same time because. I think it does help my profile as a teacher without the long beard. Uh, and it did take off like 10 years when I removed the beard. So yes, to answer your question, Marty, it's not only accepted, it's like, it's like a must. It's like, you no know, longer hair. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a must, right? Who else do we, we have any more questions here? What is, what is Gustavo say? I'd like to know about the experience to learn Portuguese. Well, that's good. Yeah, I would let Rafael answer for himself. I think he may have had an easier time than myself because Latin, uh, Italian, and Portuguese are both Latin languages, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, it was easy, but it depends on the point. Like, learning a different language is always a hard job. Now, my school, I always, I always have fun. My school, my Portuguese school, actually. Uh, I'm going to tell a funny story very fast. Uh, when I came in Brazil, I was so ignorant that I thought that Brazilians spoke the same as Portuguese from Portugal. So I thought, like, okay, the Portugal, Portugal is okay. It's like no British English, American English. What's the problem? I mean, like, let's learn port from Portugal. So I started to learn lots of words from Portuguese, from 
the port, port, for Portugal, Portuguese, Portuguese, Portuguese from Portugal. Let's say like the original one. So as Mr. Finn knows, there are many words, especially one that is used for girls, that yes, here in Brazil is extremely R -A -P -A -Z. offensive. R-A-P-A-Z. <laughs> in Portuguese, it's yeah. rapariga. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so in Portugal, Portugal, Portuguese, rapariga means young girl. Young girl. Yeah. And I made, I made, exactly. I made, hey, I made the same mistake because my, my family comes from Portugal, Portuguese, right? The Azores. So I made the same mistake. So the Portuguese that I grew up knowing, rapariga is something simple. It's a young girl. Yeah, in it's Brazil, girl. in Brazil, if you call a girl rapariga, you're calling her a whore. I think at least in northeast or in northeast, right? I think in the south is different. I cannot maybe. speak. I can't speak for the south because I've only visited a few times. I'm gonna ask. By yeah. the way, to make a long story short, like in Italy, a uh, girl is ragazza. So when you are at the restaurant, you usually to, you used to do this, like, "Hey, ragazza, qua, hey, ragazzetta, me qua." So I just translated, and I said, "Ragazza, girl, girl, Portuguese, rapariga." In the restaurant, hey, rapariga, me praga, rapariga. Everybody in the restaurant just stared like, and stared at me, like. And the yeah. girl was like with these big eyes looking at me and said, Rapariga. And I said, What? what? So the oh. girl just came next to me and just said, No, Rapariga <laughs> has failed. And I said, No, how is girl? Oh. Girl, girl, girl. And I said, Mosa Gastonesti. And I said, What is Rapariga? And she said, Puta, yo. Okay, <laughs> sorry. It's and like then people understood. Now, now, now insert foot in mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I want to disappear. Uh, by the way, learning a language, it's something that you can do, but the best way to learn language is to keep in contact with somebody. And my school of Portuguese was in front of Meg Shopping. Every day, I used to stay with two police officers, Sergio Guimarães. They used to stay there every day from 7 o'clock to 7 in the morning, 7 o'clock in the afternoon. The guy who was selling... You know, famous coaches here, like pastries, you know, the guy Guys, who was selling uh, DVDs. For, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. For my American audience, coaches, coaches is like a, a pastry, a roundy kind of pastry. It looks like this. It's like, looks like a teardrop filled with uh, shredded chicken. So that's it. It's delicious, by the way. So what I just did is stay there and talk and listen a lot. The best way to learn a language like Portuguese is to listen, understand what they say, and then you copy and pass. That's the secret. And it was kind of hard for me at the beginning because, like, the numbers, especially, especially the Maya, what's the number of the bus I have to take to go there? Uh, slow numbers. It was very complex. But in about a year, I could have passed a public contest. So. Yeah, for me, for me, it's, a, it's very similar to Rafael. And I, I apply the, the same techniques to how I teach. And even in my, if you guys uh, check out my YouTube channel on the, the homepage, there's a little trailer. I'd have like a 30 second video kind of give my three tips. I, these tips are, is how I learned Portuguese contact. Uh, what is it? What I say, first you got to want to learn the language, you know, then you got to have that contact language and then you got to try, you know, if you don't, if you don't have that contact, now, if you don't have the desire, you're not going to learn it. If you don't have that contact, you're just not going to get it. And if you're too shy to use it, you're not going to learn it. So I learned first. I always want to learn Portuguese. Like I said, my my mother's family's from Portugal, the Azores. So I always had this desire. God only knew I was going to come to Brazil one day. I spent a lot of time in front of the television when I was here. So I used the soap operas. I used the cartoons. When I first came here, there was a program in the morning called TV Globinho. That's a uh, like the mm -hmm. kids' cartoons in the morning. Uh, so I used a lot of TV, Mais Você, which is like a morning talk show. Uh, so I used a lot of TV and the soap operas. The soap operas helped me the most because they're very, you know, soap operas, they're, they're, they exaggerate. The Everything's exaggerated, dramatic. So because I had experience in my life of moving so much and first, first interacting with people based on body language, um, that's how I first started understanding context with body language and then trying to identify, paying attention to the same kind of phrases being used in certain circumstances and then trying to find opportunities to practice. Like my ex-wife, she didn't help me at all. She's just a, she's a class. The same person. with my wife. 
I just learned with, the, with like two police officers. Yeah, I learned street. out with people. I would go out with I would go out and I'd pay attention to people and I would I would try to get what they were saying and then I would just try to figure out the context and I would try to use what I knew. I don't know how many times people laughed at me and I was like, whatever. I thought to myself, keep laughing. I'm learning. You're gonna be a loser for no, I'm just kidding, but yeah. you're gonna oh. stay where you are. But you know what I mean? That's like the attitude I have. You can laugh all you want. I'm working towards something and I'm not, I'm not shy and I'm going to keep going. And guess what? Now I'm fluent. I make mistakes, but I can call the bank. I could solve problems. I go out and buy things, do this, that solve problems. I've had inter interactions on the street. I got into an argument with some SJW that's social justice warrior about a couple weeks ago, getting me, giving me a hard time for not wearing a mask outside. I said, you wear your mask. I'm <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. It was a big debate. Did it in Portuguese. So, the experience is trial and error. Uh, both Hafa and I did it without a course. We're teachers, so I don't want to like knock my profession, but you really don't need it. But it, having a teacher helps. It facilitates. It makes it easier and quicker. But nowadays with technology and the internet, having that, having that contact, having that immersion experience is crucial. But the problem is what Rafael both offer for the English learners is that opportunity to practice because you could immerse, you could absorb all you, all you want to your, to your heart's desire. But if you don't have opportunities to use it, then you're kind of, there's only so far you can go, you know? So uh, that's the kind of things that Rafael will do. So good. Look, what's funny about the, about the manscaping, there's lots of comments. Mm -hmm. That, that, that was came fun. in. Yeah, that was fun. But there's funny comments here, right? Like uh, uh, Ati, he's my wife's cousin living in Italy. Totally normal. He I told totally you he's normal. normal. He's totally normal. normal. But then, but look normal. at my friend Marty. But look at my friend Marty. My nut shots here. Look what he says. Really funny. What? The men are hairless and why are the women like <laughs> it's so hairy? <laughs> Is that true? Uh, that, 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 I have to be sincere. Um, Serious? So the men are peacocks, all pretty and hairless, <laughs> and the women? <laughs> I do not know personally. I have to be sincere. I, I'm not, I was not a Casanova, so I do not know really well how so many girls like without that. But I, I saw under the dresses that Italian women don't shave so much. <laughs> as, I would say not as much as Brazilian. Here's a friend of mine too in Brazil. He says you gotta shave. No, I mean, yeah, I don't shave. I shave my face. I don't feel comfortable shaving my body. I shave my face. I shave my balls. I mean, it's not the program to kind of talk <laughs> about that. But the rest of my body, I use a clippers. I go to at least a number two, at least to a number two. So I'm not hairy, but I'm not hairless. I, I. I would feel personally, I don't know if it's the American in me or the way I was raised. I'm kind of, people know me. I'm, I'm kind of like a, a Neanderthal in a way. I'm very caveman-like. I would feel weird being hairless. So I trim it. I don't shave it, right? What does Allison say here? I want to work abroad, specifically in Boston. And T. Rafael has helped me about it with classes. I've studied with him since last year. Yeah, very good. Rafael. Rafael's a great teacher. That's one of the reasons why I chose him to be my first guest here. Rafael and I were friends and personal in, in our own private lives, personally. Uh, he's the kind of friend that I don't get to see often because he's busy. I'm busy. <laughs> uh, that's probably like, you know, uh, when you have like an English teacher or something that you didn't mention, you work a lot. A lot. Backstage, hey, and, you work and a imagine, lot. And imagine being a, an aspiring YouTuber, too, and a family with two kids. Dude, I'm like, my plate is full. But I have to say something about working a lot, uh, especially Allison, because I know him and he has improved a lot and he is a great student. The, those who learn, I, I have to be sincere. I also chose my, I've chosen my, my, my career because like normally when a person studies English, it's a person who also does a lot in life. And I see my students who are people from universities, they are professionals like lawyers, doctors, they work and study a lot. This is something that I really appreciate about Brazilians. They do. There are, they, they say that Brazilians are lazy. I say, this is just common talk because like all the students I have, they're hardworking. I, 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 I know their lives. They wake up in the morning, take a bus, they go to work, they come back, they go to university and they have English class. I will not do, I will not do that, really. Not, not, not maybe in the past, but now I will not do that. And they're really, really hard workers. You know the what's only funny problem, though? Tell me. No, sorry, I interrupted you. The only well, problem is like when we talk about service. 
<laughs> That's another story. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah. Plumbers. Place... We need plumbers. Plumbers All come here. All over the place. All over the place. Service is bad. No one shows up on time. You go to a restaurant. They take forever to serve you. They don't come and check on you at the table. It's like they, I, the way I look at it, it's like they look at you like you're doing them a service. And, and that really irritates me because like, excuse me, I'm, I'm spending my hard earned money here. The only place that I found really good service here is, um, Sai Braza, which is now Brazin Boy, the barbecue place. Great service. I've I cannot make service. commentaries because my line of, uh, you know, supporting the service is very thin. I'm Italian, so when you talk about food, service, and restaurants, I'm, hey, you know, I, Lucas, I have no pity. Lucas has a message for you here. Right. <laughs> yes, Lucas, this is going to happen. Unfortunately, when you arrive in your 30s, the hair is starting to fall down. Whatever, man, whatever. Look at that. I'm going to be I'm gonna be 43 next month. I still got a full head of hair. Yeah, it's exactly it's just... like that. So why you are? I'm 32. You're 43. Why don't you give me your hair? <laughs> Sorry. You're the I'm, one that I'm wants gonna to make be... implants, by the way. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. You're the one that wants to be hairless, not me. So no, why don't I you just take the bic? No, no, I said the, the only the hair head. I care. No, no, you misunderstood <laughs> me. The only hair I care is on the hair and it's falling down. The oh, rest they can fall. Oh man. So why don't you just transplant this follicles from your body and just put it on your head? I was thinking to do that, by the way. Yeah, might as well. I have an uncle that did that, right? <laughs> yeah, what does that. this person say? Hapari Nordeshi is called Kenga. Yeah, that's that's profanity. That's 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 <laughs> saying bad words in, in English. Um, yeah, the, the B word, the the horror. Let's word. say like what's, a what's, woman who does a very specific job. Yeah, you know what's funny? In the south of Brazil, they do have a different term for girl that they don't use in the north. And my wife hates it when they call her that. We went down to the south for our honeymoon. We went to Gramado, amazing city beautiful place didn't feel like brazil at all but in the south they call they call young ladies or women uh guria 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 i didn't know yeah. that guria never heard of my, my wife i think i may be pronouncing it wrong someone in our chat can maybe correct me but i remember I, I believe it's guria she hates that she hates that but the funny thing is you know my wife she looks super young for her age yep you know she has she popped out yeah. two kids she popped out two kids she is she is a fox still she's super hot looks totally probably five maybe maybe ten but definitely five years younger than what hey, you can put more is. because she's listening to you so it was 15 maybe do i don't know she could be <laughs> listening she couldn't be listening i i wouldn't change what i'm saying even if you were uh <laughs> <Mr>. Miss <Friend? laughs> nah, it's okay but seriously though that but <clears throat> she, she looks a lot younger i think i look younger than my age too you know but i'm still older than she is she uh she does not like it she does not like being called that. She feels like they're calling her. She's calling. They're calling her too. Uh, but I'm telling you, the, then young. something about this north and south, with crazy for cultural differences. Uh, in Italy, again, it's, as I say, Italy is very similar about uh, similar to Brazil because of this. I did because it correct. In, I did it correct. Nice. Good so north and south in Italy is the same. Like. It's opposite, and they don't talk to each other, and they have different languages yeah. and different. Expressions. Where are you from? Are you from the north? Or are you from the south? No, I'm the center. I'm Umbro. <laughs> so you're like you're center. the divide. You're like you're right there. So so, do you lean more towards the northern style of, of Italian culture or southern style of Italian culture? I think we take the better of the both. Okay, cool. You know, That's a good have, answer. Excellent. We are excellent people. We have excellent food. We have excellent landscape. So, Allison, we here, have Allison. better of the both. He says in Italy, they're, they're, the girls are starting to shave. He uh, he lives he lived in <laughs> finally. <laughs> they could have done it like maybe ten years oh, ago, please. That's too funny. That's so funny. You they know could have done it ten years they, ago. You know what's interesting? Talking about shaving, there is a difference between the way the Brazilian women shave their legs and the American women. The Brazilian no, no, no! Women, please don't talk about that. That is weird. No, but hold on, but hold on. This I think this is interesting. It's on this topic, and we're talking about these cultural differences. Oh, yeah, that's true. I have I have noticed, and I and I'm just speaking from my experience. Maybe someone in our chat can correct me, but I have noticed that the Brazilian women, when they shave their legs, it's only from the knee to the ankle. <laughs> they do, they don't. Am I right? They don't shave. Yeah, you're right. I they don't do shave that. their thigh, right? But their their intimate areas, it's like clean, like yeah, nothing, nothing, or the little strip, it's clean. But their legs. 
from the hip to the knee, they don't touch with the razor. And from the knee to the ankle, they touch with the razor. Whereas in America, from what I understand, they shave the whole leg, everything from the but, hip. But not the... No, they tr no, they trim it. It's very, it's not very common. It's not very common to get a full bush anymore. I don't think. I don't know. I haven't. I'm trying you to be delicate. Thing. No, you are delicate. Button. This is cultural things, but you forget one thing. Brazilian men do the same. They trim the the, 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 the arms, the body, and the legs. They are forgotten. I don't do the legs. I don't even trim it. They're telling you. It's, it's exactly only, the but same. Look, but look, I only trim my arms because I got tattoos. So yeah. I got tattoos. I got tattoos on my arms. So I don't shave it. There's hair there. But I just want it. It would look weird if I shaved where the tattoos are, but I leave this rest like a giant bush. You know what I mean? So I try to – I'm yeah. about – maybe it's the artist in me. I'm about symmetry and balance. So – I, I I'm very careful about that, but I, I can't shave it completely. I would be but it's weird. it's fun because like you see, the women like just shave like from the knee down. The men shave from like <laughs> the arms until the the, the, the you know the, the hips and then bye bye. Then they bye, don't bye. they don't do anything else. Yeah, Evis Evis is Evis is reaffirming what I said. This guria is only used in the south. The people who if the, if it's used up here, you could identify where someone is. And you know what's interesting too. Brazil is a lot like, and, and you can tell me about Italy, but in America, you can pretty confidently identify where somebody's from by the dialect they use or the accent of their English. You can easily say, you could easily identify if someone's from the South, from the deep South, because you have a couple of different accents from the South. And then you have the deep South, like Louisiana and Alabama and stuff. You could identify someone from the East Coast, right? New York, Boston. They have a different accent. The North, uh, they're in Montana and the Car and the, the the Dakotas. They speak a little differently. And the West Coast, where I'm from, and the Southwest, different f mannerisms, dialects, and pronunciations, and when they speak. Same thing in Brazil. The same thing in Brazil. You could identify almost always where somebody's from by the way they speak. And same thing in Italy. In Italy, was, you know, people in the other side, like 10 kilometers from here, they have a different accent. In yeah, Italy, so we have look, 56 accents. No? That's crazy. Yeah, so Deborah, Guria is for the girl. Guri is for the guy. And if I'm not mistaken, you know, Evis and De Deborah, you guys can correct me. It's for younger, like younger people, right? Like, I don't think anybody would call me Guri. I don't know. Maybe because I look young, but I, I don't think so. You can correct me. I know it's they for will younger. They will call me like, because I'm young. <laughs> I'm pretty young too, Dude. man. Yeah, positive vibes. How you doing, Manuel? Good to see you, buddy. He used to be in my conversation <laughs> class this year. What does Juan Baptista say? What is, read that, Rafael. It's for you. Oh, uh, I miss the classes with old friend Rafael, especially. Oh, Juan, yes. Do you remember Beer's game? Yes, I do remember the Beer game. I cannot mention it here, but yes, I do remember did that. You guys play like beer, did, you guys, did you guys play beer pong and stuff in different drinking games? You don't know, want to know what means all right, that. All right. maybe, maybe next time when we have a coffee together, but soon I will be there uh, in the South, man. <laughs> peekaboo, peekaboo. That's not, that was not the, the emphasis nor the, the direction I'm going with the channel. I'm just trying to please the audience and the questions that are being brought. Uh, but, and I'm trying my best to keep this G to PG rating. Right. And <laughs> trying to be careful with my, um, with my, yes. Okay. So yes. Being careful always. What is, what does Ati say? Rafaeli, that's you. Yeah. Uh, I'm exactly, I'm from uh, a little town in Italy called Amelia. 70 clicks from Rome, 80 clicks from Rome, uh, in the center next to Perugia, a hundred kilometers from Perugia. It's kind of the most famous city over there. I mean, the, what people say in Italy, I am in the green heart of Italy because, like, everything is green there. I I'm telling you, it. it's oh an amazing place. I do, do you, you have no idea? Like, I'm in a WhatsApp group that's international. I got in the WhatsApp group, you got people in Russia, Italy, uh, Turkey, I ran all over the place, all over the place. And I kid you not, one of my dreams, one of my dreams, I want to go to Italy. I just want to go to Italy. I want to experience that culture. I just want to, dude, I just want to sit there. I want to sit there. I want to eat a delicious pizza, margarita, you know, fresh basil. I want to drink some wine. Mm -hmm. I want to drink. I want. I want to eat that mozzarella salad, mozzarella with the tomato and the basil, 
and I want to sit there and drink some nice wine. I want to smoke my pipe or a cigar and just, just chill and drink my wine. I smoke my cigar, last for like two hours. And when the cigar's over, eat another plate of delicious food. Look at the beautiful landscape, green hills. Ah, one day, man, one day, one day. It will. If the, man, world, uh, yeah, if the world doesn't come to an end, and if communism doesn't destroy every government and control what we do, and if I don't have to get a a jab, uh, a jab visa, because I'm not gonna get, I'm not planning to get no jab, you know. I think the most important thing is the COVID to, to end because if the COVID doesn't stop, that's like, what I'm know, saying. We, we're though, not over there. That's what I'm saying, and I don't want to be forced to get the jab to go anywhere. I don't want that. Well, by the way, going back to Italy, uh, if any of you wants to go there. Do not think that Rome is Italy. Rome, yes, it's a beautiful city, but there are so many different places uh, that are cheaper and as beautiful as Rome. Rome is unique, of course, but for example, Umbria, Toscana, which are very famous, there are small cities. For example, my town uh, was founded like 700 years before Rome. So it's older than wow. Rome. Wow. So, you know, there are many beautiful places that are cheaper and they're as beautiful as Rome even more. I still remember a place called Monte Rigioni. And uh, well, it's in Toscana, in Tuscany. And the place is amazing. Like it's, it seems like a real castle. Or Bevagna, which is another city, historical city. Or, or the things that come up my mind. Um, Riccione, it's like a famous place where like, the sea is beautiful and it's a lot of nightlife. Or another good part is like Padova, like in north of Italy. It's beautiful. It's close to Venice. But you don't have to go to Venice. You go there one day and then you go to Padova or you go to the north in the mountains. Beautiful. This is something that there are lots of activities in Italy. This is something that I see that is different from here in Brazil. And that I have to point out. Something that Brazilians do, they always go to pub, restaurants, shopping. That's in it. Italy, people do something different. The people, you kept cool. There is no shopping, by the way. It's very hard to find shopping. There are the huge cities. But people like go to the mountain. At the table, like 10, 15 people, and prepare barbecue over there. Yeah, drinking wine. Eat, drink wine. That's what I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. That like that lifestyle yeah. is just totally. It totally attracts me. It's like it's the way I just want to. Like if I don't ever plan on retiring, and that's one of the things that I do like about the Brazilian culture. Like people here do know how to chill. Like I don't do the shopping and stuff either, but I do like to hang out with friends. I love to have barbecues in my house. I, now I have a house. Now I live in a house. I have barbecues in my backyard or there are certain bars here. I like to go to like not bars, but here, here in Brazil, we call them botecos. They're like, uh, it's like a bar you eat outside and you eat, you eat, you know, delicious finger food and drink beer and talk. And, you did not call me yet, by the way. Sorry. I haven't gone bro in a while. <laughs> I haven't gone. Hey, if you're not afraid of COVID man, maybe in another week or two, you could come over to my house. We'll have a barbecue here. You bring your uh, wife have a barbecue here. I had COVID. Just put a mask, take my precautions. So, like, should it be done? You don't need a mask here. My house is. I. You want to see my special mask? It's a very mini mask. This is my mask. Oh, God. That's my mask. <laughs> well, I. I, I really. <laughs> I was a fun mask. <laughs> well, that was fun. Well, that's organized, <laughs> by the way. Anyways, that's anyways, but I do, I do love that. I do love that. I love, I love to just hang out with friends, eat snacks drink cold beer talk smoke a cigar or something and just chill last time last time you and i hung out was like two months ago right we had a coffee and a cigar yeah well it was in this coffee it was a nice cigar by the way yeah i yours wasn't i've had that cigar and, next yeah, time, next again, time no problem next time i'll next time I'll, I'll 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 hook you up i have i have a box coming in the mail live smoking Anyways, cigars it would be nice yeah i got a couple here i bought a couple here i have uh i restocked a few i bought a I have a, I spent a little, I got a Cohiba. That's what I want to ask you. Is it common in USA to smoke cigars? Uh, yeah. Back smoking a, in USA, if it is common. That's the right this one. This one's a pretty good one. It wasn't very expensive. Pazon, Pizon, I think it's called. Yeah, Pinzon. That's a nice one. I like that one. And I really like this brand here. This is the same brand that I, that I smoked when I hung out with you, but it's a different style. It's called a Gordito. It's a little this short. It's very fatty. nice. It's very fat. But it's nice. Elvis. I, I really like this brand. This is a Brazilian one. It comes from Bahia. Uh, yeah, it's very common in America. You have smoke shops and stuff. It's very common in America. Um, uh, cigars, pipes, people. Uh, the unfortunate thing about America, there's a war on tobacco. Tobacco's bad. 
but marijuana is becoming legal everywhere, which doesn't make I don't understand. Like a cigar and a pipe, you don't inhale this. This is like it's for it's leisure. You taste it and you hang out, and it's like a I don't know. It's great, but it's common. Yeah, it it's is what it common. is. It's much more common in America than it is here in Brazil. It's very difficult to find cigars here. I had to hunt them down. Ooh. I found these. I'm thinking that we are. Found these yeah, I, I, I don't. And sorry to interrupt, but thinking that in Brazil is like a country rich of tobacco, coffee, these kind of things, you know? Uh, Deborah says, we have the best pizzas. Yes. Is, Deborah, are you Brazilian or Italian? Are you Brazilian? Because, like, if you are That's, Brazilian, I, yes, you do. I would disagree. That. Yeah, that, I, would, <laughs> I, would I would disagree. disagree. Yeah, I you would have disagree. good pizza though. Sometimes no, they do. Yeah, there, there is good pizza. My issue, my issue with Brazilian pizza, I have two issues with Brazilian pizzas. It's almost always undercooked. Uh, yeah. I like a pizza that's crispy on the bottom and fluffy on top. Uh, so it's all, almost always undercooked. You grab a slice of pizza and it just bleh, drops, and it's not what's it's not supposed to really be like that. You <laughs> kind of fold it and hold it, and you guys go overboard on the toppings. Just overboard. You guys put so many kinds of toppings on pizzas. Uh, Rafael, he can tell you more. He's the Italian. But I like a nice, simple, rich, flavored pizza like Margarita. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I have nothing against Brazilian pizza. Yesterday, by the way, and if you want to, I think I know who is Deborah. Uh, if you want to enter in contact with me, I can show you like a very nice pizzeria here. I really enjoy it. It was a nice pizza. Of course, not as good as. Italy. Why? Well, we, it's like if you make a feijoada in Italy, you will never do it as good as here. I Brazil. was I was waiting for this comment right here. Don't let me cut you off. <laughs> I was waiting for this comment. Yeah, it's like the same. The same. I was waiting for this comment. But <laughs> something that I would like to see in Brazil, it's finally a hero will raise from the ashes and will be the president of Brazil and prohibit people to eat pizza with the civil wars. It's not going to happen. Nicolo, you cannot do that. Happen. It's not going to happen. Here we raised from the ashes. <laughs> and also, don't like to, something. They don't like to touch their food. Now, there is something else. Please, stop making big pizza, medium pizza, small pizza. What, what, what the hell is that? Please. <laughs> pizza is pizza. It's just one size. It's like this. <laughs> <laughs> what is like, we want a small pizza, medium pizza. Are you kidding me? Like, pizza is <laughs> pizza. Give me a pizza. It's like this size. I mean, like, the difference between... A small pizza, medium pizza, big pizza, but the price and the material used for do it, it's ridiculous. Like make a big pizza. Apparently. Yeah. I do want to try, I do want to try New York pizza, but I'm not the biggest fan of just cheese pizza. I I like I like cheese pizza, don't get me wrong. But I my like I said, my favorite is margarita. I love it because you have three simple toppings: cheese, tomatoes, and fresh basil, maybe some garlic and olive oil. Mm. But just I mm. love it. I love it. It's mm. simple. Right? You know what I'm talking about. It's just mm. simple ingredients and rich flavors. <clears throat> rich flavors. Oh, my God. I'm mouth my mouth <clears throat> is watering right now. <clears throat> so good. Just for a little detail. Who Tell was me. the architect who invented to know. put sliced tomato in the margarita? Who was the I genius? I really would love that because that makes no and, sense. And it, Why you put sliced tomatoes on a pizza with tomato sauce? That makes no but sense. It's, but it's different. But it's different. The tomato sauce and the sliced tomato is different. But, but I you love it. it's my kill favorite. the taste. See, American-Italian differences. That's American yeah. and that's Italian. Like You I do not it, use man. tomato sauce and tomatoes slice uh, there. You will broke. And margarita. Basil. I love it. Uh, tomato sauce, mozzarella, and not like a kilogram of mozzarella. Just a little... And no, and so no, to, so no, so no, so no, so no slices of tomato. Who did that should be arrested. Oh man, for no. crimes against like, humanity. <laughs> come on, it reminds me of like that mozzarella salad, tomato, mozzarella, and basil, and olive oil. That God, is caprese. So it's a different thing. Caprese is different. There's another it's dish. You don't do it with the so, pizza. It's so good. I mean, you All can right, do look, it with the pizza. I got. Food. Hey, I gotta argue. I gotta. Ar I don't wanna argue with Julie, uh, Julio here, Julio Caesar. He says, and we have. To agree with each other, Brazilians Brazilian barbecue is the best in the world. Well, I do agree. I do I, agree. I, I, I have, I want to, but I have had legit American barbecue. Guys, do not. Media is a lie. It's not hamburgers and hot dogs. American barbecue kicks ass. Tri tip ribeye, uh, smoked meats. Americans do know how to make good barbecue and there's differences with Texas, Texan barbecue and like the Carolina barbecue. You have some differences there. So, I mean, 
Ah, uh, it's it's amazing. Brazilian barbecue is amazing. You put meat, some um, coarse salt, throw it on a fire. It's fabulous. Uh, but if you do try, you have some to legit, season it. No, yeah, they coarse salt. You season it with coarse salt. That's how they season it. That's what they do, and it's good. You. Let, let me ask you something, Rafael. Let me ask you something. Talking about Brazilian barbecue, what's your favorite cut of meat? Because the cuts of meat in America are different than the cuts of meat in, in, in Brazil. The only cut that I recognize as the same is, uh, is uh, uh, what is it? Filet mignon. That's the only cut that's the same. Everything else is a different kind of cut. First of all, you have to find a place who knows how to cut the meat because you cannot go anywhere. There are some specific places here, at least here in Jopé, so that you can go and say, okay, they will give me that in that way because most of the people don't know how to cut the meat. So you have to go to a person that knows what he's doing, like an English teacher. So the second thing is that my favorite cut is the what is called picanha. Why? Yeah, delicious. The fat. Because, yes, that fat. If you do the picanha right, where you grill it, that fat with not only salt and black pepper, that is yeah. kind of, but with the, the right the flavor. flavors, yeah. Is gonna be delicious, yeah. and I agree with you. Picanha is one of my favorites too, but value, like cost value, my favorite is fraldinha because, like picanha, uh, the fat is involved. But the fat, like picanha, people don't know picanha. It's a piece of meat, red meat with no veins, no fat in the meat, and you got this layer of fat on top. And the way you cut the picanha, you keep the fat on it, and you eat it together. It's not a, it's not like a gelatin kind of fat. It's a, it's a kind of a thick fat. It's very, it's like the meat itself. It's really good. But fraldinha is almost half the price as picanha, and I don't. When I cook fraldinha on the barbecue, I don't slice it up. I I buy the whole whatever the kilo, and I get the piece. I season it, and I put the whole thing on the grill, and I let it cook whole. And then I slice it up when it's done, and it's so succulent, and juicy, and delicious. Oh. It's so good. So, you know, Julio, yes, Brazilian barbecue is phenomenal, but uh, different. There's different styles. American does really good barbecue. I don't know about Italy. I don't know about Italy, but you American enter. Really you good. enter in a very deep. Well, first of all, we don't do barbecues. <laughs> Like Brazil, like take a lot of meat and you meet, meet, meat. When we do yeah, barbecues, yeah, 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 we, yeah. thank you, uh, we use a lot of different things. So not like in Brazil. Sorry. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, uh, and in Italy, mostly we have something called brasciola, which is like pork. We eat a lot of pork. It's super hard, at least in my area, to grill red meat. We can have a, a stick. Yes, you can buy it because we have like, you know, the, the fireplace and during the winter that people like burn it. But it's not like Brazilian barbecue that buy kilograms of meat, salt, beer, 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 canna, canna, canna. No, it's not like that. But we have to say something like in Italy, we, we give a lot of attention to the meat. So normally, at least in my area, which is Umbria, we prepare the meat a day before and we put anything possible, salt, uh, garlic, um, parsley. Uh, rosemary, uh, carrots. We, we prepare the meat as if it was like, you know, uh, like a baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do the same thing. That's what we like do. Like if I'm going to have, have a barbecue, I prepare the day before. I prepare the meat. I get it all ready. So when it comes to the day of the barbecue, I just cook, drink beer, eat meat, you know. Yeah. It's One of the things that I got shocked here is that the food, especially in the fast, in the eat as you can, like eat as you can. I don't know how to call it like, um, balance. Uh, so you put the, all, you know, all you can eat, right? Yeah, yeah, it's all you can eat, but I wasn't sure. So they don't put flavors on the food. The food is there, no flavors, most of the time, no salt. You put it by yeah, yourself. Yeah, like no, 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 season, no seasoning, no seasoning. No, no, they they don't season the food, and like I don't, I don't feel the taste of. Okay, food can be good, but if you don't season it. You know, and this is something common here. They don't season. That's why I told you, like, just yeah. salt on the meat is not like. You know, it's funny. It's... I'm a huge hot sauce fan, right? 
This here, this here is like my favorite hot sauce, chipotle. I, I eat it with almost everything. And Brazilians are not accustomed to eating spicy food. Maybe because I come from LA and there's a big Hispanic influence. I love spicy food. And this here, it's it's full of flavor. It's not so hot, but it's full of flavor. Um, Evis here, Evis made a comment about Italian pizzas are the best, but they're totally different to our Brazilian version. So I've tried both. I love them. Yeah, yeah I, I know Evis. He's traveled to Europe and, and stuff. Uh, Ati here, he is Brazilian. He's been living, I think, more of his life in Italy now. He's a pizza yolu. He actually taught uh, me how to make my uh, uh, Allison. Allison, yeah. Oh. He actually taught me. He actually taught me how to make my own pizza dough. Him and I, when he was here last time, we had a pizza cook-off. So him and I were having a competition and uh, we were making pizzas, and our guests were the judge. And sorry, Allison, the student outdid the master. I remember that. I remember that day. I remember that day. Um, yeah, dude, nut shots. He says, if I go to New York, oh no, no slices on pizza and tomatoes. Are you savages? Right? You, you, like if it. you do that, if you do that in Italy, you will be arrested. <laughs> At least you will be kicked out from the pizzeria, from the, from the pizza Yolo. That's and great. That... The pizza Yolo there can confirm. I saw, I, I work in a pizzeria and I don't know what they do. Like, I That's... saw the pizza Yolo literally going out from the kitchen. And screaming on a couple of Americans that because they asked for ketchup. I still remember that. Oh, that's horrible. Well, who would put I don't understand why people put ketchup on a pizza. It's like it's like people who put people who put like steak sauce on a steak. Like for me, the only reason why you would put I think I saw a comment here too about that. I think the only people who yeah. put sauce on a steak is if the steak is too dry. Like, but if a steak you don't need the sauce, seasoned, you just need to put I, the fat of the sauce of it. That's that's what I'm saying. If the steak is seasoned right and cooked right, you don't need to put any steak sauce. Now, I like barbecue sauce on certain kinds of meats and stuff or ribs, but on steak, I don't want anything but the salt and the fat and the juices from itself. That's what I like. I don't like in America because there's there's a very popular steak sauce in America called A1. But A1, in my opinion, works for people who like steak well done. And when I, when I look at people, like my father, when I see people order steak well done, I think to myself, why are you like, what are you doing? You're ruining. It's like, to me, it's like cardboard flavored. It's like meat that's, that's it's like you're eating cardboard that's flavored like meat. You know, it's dry and it's chewy, like hard. And so I understand the steak sauce, but <laughs> I, I like my meat just with the salt, just with the salt and the fat, right? Things like uh, that. You should go to Italy and eat oh, like cinghiale. Here it is. Here it is right here, I think. Oh, gosh. Uh, please, know. guys, if you have any questions about this, do it because the teacher is beat and he has to go to sleep. So go for it. You got to so go to sleep know, now? You don't do it. Uh, I'm, I'm beat. Here. Oh, you should like. As, if you have any questions, please, let's answer. It would, really, really be, blah, 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 blah. It would be really good. See? I'm starting to have low battery. No good problem, to answer no the questions. Uh, this this is for me. You don't do yeah, well, so from, it's not for space. you. It's a comment. It's a comment from Peekaboo. From, from what, what I know, know, you don't do with the sauce. And once you've lost, you, tomatoes, you, 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 you can, you can look, you can have pizza with nice tomatoes. I've seen it and it's possible, but you do not put tomato sauce. It's like you have something that is tastes like tomatoes and you put something that is a tomato that does different taste, but it's the same thing. It's like, if I put like mayonnaise and another brand of mayonnaise, I mean, they will take this is the same taste, it's but it's a little totally bit different. different. So don't put like, it's that's it, the point. It's taste I'll of to tomato. Disagree. I have to disagree. Yeah, that's I the like point. Mine. You kill the, the, the taste. You don't understand. Like say, you kill the taste. Like we say, like we say in Portuguese, nada ve, whatever. I don't know. Exactly. Has nada ve, wherever putting this, the tomato sauce and sliced tomato on it is like to do the four cheese with tomato sauce. It's that's crazy. Good. <laughs> what does Austin say? Mm -hmm. Let's let's kind of let's check out these questions and then we'll wrap it up. Is a uh, grave, yeah. Uh, but try to be sick of that. No, me, ah, amigo mío, no me fa, no me fa ver. De ver, ah. Este hombre sido siete años y no me maña una brochola. Literally, I said, please don't torture me because I've been here for seven years and a half and I haven't eaten the typical things of Italy and I'm umbro, you know. Yeah, brisket. A brisket is a kind of meat that is cooked the way I do the fraudina. It's a big piece of meat. You season it very heavily. It's cooked for a while, uh, smoked and heat. Um, it's uh, very delicious. But 
it's a little different than the fraudinha than what I was talking about. Oh yeah, Deborah did mention she is Brazilian because we asked her, right? She saw, talked about the the best. She's right here. I'm Brazilian. I'm Brazilian. Ah so, yeah. yeah, Raquel, Deborah Raquel is Brazilian. If you yeah. go Brazilian, I know name. it's a Brazil, it's a Brazilian name, but I wasn't I wasn't sure, right? So, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Anyways, so yeah, let's look at this. Let's kind of wrap this up. How funny is that? Is it that when we have an Italian on? And we're discussing pizza. It's just, you know, what's funny, Marty. <laughs> getting into the topic of food is almost like uh, an inevitable, inevitable category that I fall in. Like I have a whole list of questions here. I almost didn't ask any of them. With with, um, how about you? You kinda, can ask. That's okay. I kind of knew we were gonna get like this because we can do it again. Right? You're a friend of mine, and we can definitely do it again. But you're a friend of mine, and like I, 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 I already kind of knew how this was gonna turn out, and I knew this was gonna be. Now, hopefully it was, but it was going to be enriching for my audience because you and I, like I started the show off by saying we're friends. We're both English teachers. We both come from abroad and we live in the same city. So you and I both come here with different perspectives from different backgrounds and different cultures immersed in a totally different culture. Uh, from what I got from you, there's not so many differences, so many differences as far as, um, uh, some of the cultural nuances that you find in Brazil, like you are in Italy. Whereas as an American, totally different. Like there's nothing the same. There's really like the way you talk, interact with people. No, how you... uh, there are many differences. We have the time to talk about, but there are some cultural shocks and things that are different. Like there are many things that Brazilians are similar to Italians, Europeans in general, especially Italians. Uh, maybe because Italians like immigrate a lot here, but yes, uh, the experience was kind of light. But there are still things that we may talk another time, in another life, will be very nice. That they're really different, really, really. Different. The pizza with tomato slices is one. Of them. <laughs> 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 the same thing. Ah, that's funny. That's so funny. That's so funny. Well, what do we say in English? Different strokes for different folks. And that's the yeah. thing, you know, guys, uh, one of, and, and yeah, let's, let's kind of wind this down. One of the things, one of the things, one of my aims for doing this was to have done what I believe I achieved. And that's just to bring kind of a, you could say cultural awareness to people. Uh, we live in the same world, but we have different, we come from different parts of it. And we see nowadays what's going on in America and the world is, you know, division division of people of race and stuff and i'm in the category of like there's really no difference in races we're all the human race but i do there's big differences in nationalities and in cultures and we have to respect where people come from because if you think about it we as people are an accumulation of our experiences like we are we are an accumulation of our memories like a person who has amnesia who are they they don't have a name they don't have a background. They don't have a history, you know? So I think we, as people, we need to go back and look at people as people and not as color and not as titles. Because here in Brazil, and this is something else I wanted to touch on, but we didn't have time. And But here in Brazil, there's a big class difference. There are the haves and the have-nots. That's a bigger division of people than the races. I would think you would agree with me, right, Rafael? There's a bigger division between classes than races here. Like the slice. <laughs> Don't be those eyes of the yeah. pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyways, so anyway, that's that's kind of like my point about that. And um, the fact that you and I are both are English teachers, we're trying to do our part to bridge the gap of these differences via English, via the communication um yeah, via communication. And I don't plan these lives to be like English lessons like I do my videos. My videos are to kind of do that. My videos are to help people to be better communicators and help people who are learning English by themselves, to help teachers to, be, to improve their lessons and things like that, tongue twisters for fun. But I want my lives to be more down to earth, raw. I want to engage like we did today. This was wonderful. Engage with people. Uh, I'm full of opinions and points of views. People who know me know that about me. And uh, I never claim to know everything, but I've lived quite a bit 
in these four decades, and I, Rafael, I assume you the same, you've traveled a lot, you come from a different culture. So experiences help us, I believe, to achieve understanding. And when you, when, when you have that, you're able to relate better to people. So that was my aim. I, I hope you enjoyed it, Rafael. I, I hope you did. I did. I had a good time. I hope everybody in the I, chat. I had. Yeah, good. I hope everybody. We can do it again, by the way. We can talk about many other things. It's fine. We can stay like talking for three hours, but I think that everybody wants, you know, I want the second yeah, part. I think people, yeah, people, and and we have different, we have different time zones here because people, there's quite a few people in America here. We have Ad, uh, Allison who's in Italy now. So what time is it there? It's like maybe three o'clock. It should be like three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, about three o'clock in like the morning. That. So they're crazy. There are these bit, there are these big time differences here. So I choose. Oh, which is normal in Italy, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, I choose I choose nine o'clock at night because it's easier for me. Um, my children are sleeping. We live in Brazil, so there's always lots of noise in the streets and the cars and the motorcycles. And at least where I live, at least where I live, I live there's kind of like a, a main street. Yeah, so yeah, that's why that's why I choose this time. Those of you guys in the chat, be aware. I think I'm going to change because I've been going. I've been going on Tuesday nights. I sent, I think one night I went on Wednesday and I think I'm going to change to Wednesday because of the time difference in America. There's a meeting that I'm not seeing on Tuesdays because of the time difference. So I think I'm going to make a change from Tuesday night to Wednesday night, but I still plan on going live once a week. So just keep your eyes open. If you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, check it out. Uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you guys are know more about Rafael, follow him on Instagram. That's his tag. Send him a DM, get in contact with him. He posts very interesting videos. A lot of them are Portuguese based. So uh, those of you guys in America and stuff may not get it. But if you guys are Brazilian and you want to see a different point, check out Rafael's channel. Good stuff. If you want to get in contact with me, you can leave a comment on the video. I will save it. And you could also reach me on Instagram as well. I reach out. I communicate and answer everybody. I may not do it immediately because I'm a very busy guy, but... I do make an effort to engage with you guys. I do. I, what I do is out of love. I love what I do and my aim is to help people. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I believe Rafael is the same. Otherwise we probably wouldn't be friends because birds of a feather flock together. So, that's true. Right. So without further ado, guys, I'm glad y'all made it. I hope you enjoyed it. I will save this uh, in my feed on my channel, share it. And I hope to see you next live. All right, guys. Rafael is great. Thank you for being here. Stick around Thanks for to a you, minute. Man. Stick around for a minute. Don't don't go to chat. But yeah. But the rest of you guys, it. thanks for thanks for stopping by. Thanks for engaging in the chat. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to check out Rafael. Send him some love, and I'll catch you guys in the next live. I'm Mr. Finn, and I'll catch you guys later. Bam. <laughs>